Welcome back to the print shop. I'm Dan. Today, I'm going to be replacing some wires on here and talking about uh, keeping up on consumables. So this cover doesn't look too terrible, uh, but this top part has a lot of cyan on it and there's kind of an absence of cyan here and you can kind of see that here. Now the wires on here are only at 100%. Uh, right here, 101, 100, black's at 131. On the 6500 anyways, I could get twice that on there. Um, but the further you run it, the more stress you put on other components, so it's not really advisable. But I'd be interested to hear what other people say that are running these 1070 or 2070 or 3070 machines on what life you get out of. That ain't good. I bet I know what happened. This happened once before. This whole heat roller, the set screws on it loosen up and it travels to the side and then the chain hops off the side so there's no drive right now. So, let's uh, take a side cover off, take a look at it. So the last time this happened, I put Loctite on those uh, set screws on the other side. I thought it was going to be good to go, but I don't know if maybe uneven pressure, because you can adjust the operator, operator side versus the non-operator side. Maybe the uneven pressure, because I did have them another like five pounds on one side than the other side. Maybe that makes it walk or what. But. So what I got to do is loosen the set screws on both sides, pound the heat roller back over, and tighten it all back up. This is probably the third time it's happened. Uh, maybe I just got to tighten those set screws a little tighter. It's kind of a kind of a bad design. There should be some sort of a a C clip or something on either side that keeps it from traveling. You know that I don't, now that I'm thinking about it, I bet the Loctite basically is useless because that roller heats up to 250 degrees, and I don't know at what point Loctite will begin to fail. So at least I know how to fix it. It'll be real quick. I'm trying to determine a better way to do this. If I got a collar to put in here, it wouldn't be able to move over. Now I gotta try and measure that. Yeah, so a collar exactly the size of that should work. And then that'll keep this gear from uh, traveling over. I mean, that'll, that'll solve the problem forever. Um, it's not going to rub on anything because that's this is fixed and that's fixed so I just need a, a collar that will act as a spacer and keep that from moving over. Okay back in business. So I hopped on Amazon and I bought two collars and high temperature Loctite. Hopefully if I put a collar on that side and a collar on this side and Loctite the set screws, then we should be good. We'll see. Okay, where were we? Looking at wires on this. So yeah, I'd be interested to hear uh, the kind of life that other people get on their wires. Um, the nice thing about this is the counter will tell you what kind of life you got out of the last wires. And it says the previous wires were replaced at 
and I'm at 101%. So that tells me that when you know the professional technician was doing this, they were replacing the wires early to solve problems. And I kind of remember that same scenario with the 3070, meaning that the wires will sometimes need to be replaced before 100%. So I'm going to throw new wires in here. We'll see what it looks like. And uh, then we should be running. While I have this open, I'm going to have to clear these wire counters. Shut her off. things first got to run all of our adjustments and just out of habit I always hold on to these just in case for some reason one of the new ones has a broken wire I have something to fall back on before I just toss those away Forget to calibrate. Okay, it turns out I think I need some drums. So, which is kind of strange considering my drums are at between 60 and 90%. But let me show you what I did. So I printed that out and it looks much nicer here. Um, but I still see a faint uh, difference there so I printed out this test chart and you can definitely see a hard line right here it's weird you know it looks good and then boom it gets lighter I was thinking potentially developer but typically you'd lose density across the whole image when developer needs to be replaced um, so I swapped the yellow and the cyan drum and that is gone now. However, you can see more problems here. So the yellow drum was looking worse than uh, the cyan drum. So they're, they're both kind of worn out and need to be replaced. So I'm gonna order drums and developer at the same time just so I have it all might be a good idea just to replace everything because then I'd know exactly where it stands since this was a used machine. But uh, yeah, the developer is at 160 to 180 and the drums should have life left, but then it would all be good and then we can take it from there. But uh, these look good now with those drums switched, so I'm going to print these out and uh, get some drums and developer here. Okay, so I just ordered a developer. Um, that was from 
Amazon actually had the best price on that. And uh, two drums that I want to test. The OEM Konica drums are like $350 a piece. Uh, but if you get a generic, only the drum and blade instead of the drum unit, it's $90 a piece. Don't know how those will do. I know people said that they had good luck with generic stuff, but I've always bought OEM stuff because I just didn't want to mess with saving some money. But we're going to give it a try right off the bat here just to see what it's like. And, uh, and you'll be able to see how they work out. So those are on their way. So, so far, let's see, we're about three quarters of the way through this month. I'm not running it quite as hard as last month, so my ROI is actually gonna take a little bit longer than expected, um, but that's fine. I'm still really happy with that ROI. So I calculated a click charge of well under a cent so far. And if you wanna see the details of how I do that and uh, all the details of how much I'm spending on parts and uh, the time it takes to maintain this, uh, head over to my Patreon page. I just uploaded the Excel sheet, which will be updated monthly probably um, with how things are going here. That Excel sheet's gonna have the total amount of clicks and then how I break that down and divide that out to calculate my click cost, which currently is well under a cent and will actually be a lot lower too because I included the costs of the developer and drums and other parts that I haven't even put in here yet and used up. Um, so we'll see how it goes. We'll have better numbers, uh, you know, months and years down the road uh, compared to right now. But all the details are over there if you want to uh, want to follow along. The collars are here. Just throw them in. All right, that spacer was tricky to get in there, but you can see that collar there. That's gonna keep this gear from moving in, and that's where it travels. It travels in. So that's gonna act as two things. It's gonna be a, a spacer to physically stop it from moving, and it's also squeezing that shaft and holding its place too. So we'll see how that works. I think that'll, that'll be the last time I have to mess with this. And since I have two collars, if I put it on the outside of this, it's not really gonna do anything because this shaft is moving to the side. So I'm gonna put the second one on this side of this metal plate here to keep it from moving that way. Okay, I also want to put a thread locker on these set screws in here. That's not going to be here till later tonight, so I will I'll just run it like this. Even without Loctite on there, I'm pretty sure this will be just fine because of that collar over there. So I think this is good to go. So as always, thanks for watching. I'm having fun making these videos and uh, I enjoy the comments that you guys leave down below. So, uh, well, we'll catch you on the next one.